Hey everybody, Mazer here, and today we're talking about Pixel Game Maker MV. This is a program that I got my hands on to learn some uh, basically node-based programming for top-down and side-scroller games, and I would like to share some of the things I've learned to make your own top-down shooter. So we have things like animation of tilting our, cell our characters back and forth, uh, making enemies shoot, making enemies have a pattern, leveling up your ship like we just did right here, and setting up score and animation, as you can see right here, boom, 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 death. All right, so let us put this little demo aside and we'll go step by step on how we did every uh, part of the process, okay? So let's begin. All right, everybody, so today we're going to start making our very first level. And in this tutorial, we'll show you how to set a level up, import tiles, import animation and create level one uh, i'm sorry a player one that will be movable through our keyboard all right so we're going to give this uh tutorial one project name tutorial one and we are going to put this in youtube tutorial that's the folder all right we're going to create a blank project and we're going to go hit next top view action hit next again we're going to use a 24 by 24 uh, tile sheet just because that's what i have on hand and we're going to go by 640 by 480. no reason just make it easy all right so this is your scene list here's your object list your physics calculations up here you have your scenes your tiles your animations objects resources transitions and we will get into each one of those as we come across it so the first thing we want to do for our top-down shooter is extend the level vertically. All right, top-down shooters usually scroll up or they scroll to the side. And this one is going to scroll up. So we're going to make a brand new scene right here. We're going to go level one. All right, so we have background music up here. We have uh, colors for the background. We're going to leave it black. Uh, this is where you can set up a image that you want to use, maybe. We have a menu screen to preload, then you can tell it what menu screen to go to. We have screen auto-scrolling, which is going to be very important. And now we have the screen size. So, what we want to do is, like I said, expand it vertically. So we're going to extend it by four times. So you go to screen height, one, two, three, four. Excellent. Now you want to go to area accessible by the player. Now this is going to be where the player can explore on their own. All right, super easy. We just multiply this by four. All right, which I believe is, yes, 1920. And now we want the area that's going to be accessible by the camera. We want the camera to do the same thing. Perfect. Now, this is a vertical scrolling level. So we go to screen auto scrolling. We're going to have the direction at zero, which is going to go up. And let's put it at 0.5 for our test. Perfect. All right, when it's done loading, you can now see we have one, two, three, and four regions for us to color in. This is our level. This is going to be the start, and up here will be the finish. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is set up the background. All right. So you go to tiles. The tile list is currently blank, so we're going to go to add tile. All right, tile 01. Now we have standard tiles, which are basic backgrounds, gimmick tiles that have functions like sound effects and other things and switches, and auto tiles, which once placed, they're automatically linked to, th to things like walls and um, attacks and stuff like that, but all that, we just want a good old standard tile. Now we go to new image and in our folder, I already placed down a uh, tile sheet that I used from one of Pixel Game Maker's uh, tutorials. I just used the spreadsheet there. We got it here, here's all the tiles, beautiful, perfect. And we're all set. Now this is a good moment to point something out. So when you make a level or a game with pixel game maker you might be tempted to drag and drop your objects into these folders right here 
So you have an image where all your images will go, and you might want to drop your photos in here. If you do that, the game will not register it. You have to import everything from a separate folder, which is why I have everything outside of the folder here. And once you load it into the game, it gets inputted to the right folder that you can find later on. So I just wanted to give you a quick little um, bit of information right there. Okay, so let's go back to our scene. So we are going to paint each section a different tile. First, we got to load the tile up. Go to Scene Settings, go to Tile Set, and select the tile that you want to import. Ours is 01. There we go. Now, we're going to put everything on Layer 2, so it's going to be in the background. All right, just to make things nice and easy for us. And we're going to use the Square Paint tool here and give each section its own look. So it's going to be brown, followed by red. Let's see, followed by uh, black for the last one, and a nice blue for the bottom. Excellent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Make sure you save often. Now that we have a level basically designed out, Let's create a character. To make a character, we have to start with the animations. All right, so we're going to click on animations, add animation. All right, I'm going to call it player one. Now it's going to be a motion animation because it's not going to be a special effect. It's not going to be a particle. It's going to be motion, it's something that we control. And we're going to select two different animations, one for the plane staying still and one for it tilting. All right. So this is for the spread sh uh, sprite sheets right here. And this is going to be for animated GIFs, all right? But we want a sprite sheet. So we hit new, and we're going to select the first ship. All right, there you go, add it. Now we're going to do one for the tilting of the ship, which is the sprite sheet we have here. Now we're going to chop it up into a proper partitioned sprite sheet. So we want to remove partition evenly and we want to make three horizontal lines. One right here, one right here. So this is image one, image two, image three, and we're done. Boom. All right. So this is our ship. And first thing we got to do is center everything to make it nice and easy. Boom. You hit the center icon and we're good. So motion one, we're just going to call it flying. All right. Now flying is going to have three different directions. The directions is what button you push to trigger the animation. So we're going to have direction one, which is still. We're going to have direction two, which is bank left. And then direction three, which is bank right. Perfect. Now, when you click on one of these, you'll notice a square right here. This is what buttons get pushed to cause the animation to trigger. So bank left, we want these buttons. Bank right, we want these buttons. And still, we want none of them. All right. Now we need to input the frames. I apologize, the frames. So it's going to have three frames of animation. Okay. Frame one. Yes. All right. So for bank left and bank right, we're going to choose the uh, sprite sheet right here. All right. So frame one is going to be the still image right here. Frame two will be this image. Frame three will be that image. Nice and easy. Now we have only one sprite sheet going to the left. How do we do that for the right? Super easy. We add our three frames. And then we click on flip horizontal. So frame two and frame three. There you go. It gets flipped horizontally and we're good to go. All right. So now we have our ship. We have the image and the animations. So now it's time to make that into a movable object that the player can control. And this is where we go to objects. All right. Make sure you save. Always save in this program. So we're going to add our object. We're going to call it player one. We'll use player one 
animation, and it's going to be associated with the player group. We want object controlled by an input device, so we control this. It's going to be affected by enemy groups for both impacts and detections, and it will also detect walls in the tile group. All right. So how, here we go. Oh, let's get rid of this. This is what you're going to get. You're going to get a default single action object. So this is the animation that's going to play when the ship is completely still. Now we want another animation to play when the ship has an action. So I apologize, I did that too fast. We go to right click, add action. All right. The motion we want is the flying motion. We're not going to set anything else because this is going to be changed by an input. All right, so we're going to call it banking. Now with the waiting animation, we do want this to change the animation itself because you're not going to push any buttons to trigger this. So you want this to be set to still. All right. Now we got to uh, connect these two actions together based off input. So click on waiting, right click, add link, and connect it to banking. Then from banking, do the same thing back to waiting. So we're creating a loop here. All right. Click on the arrow going to banking. And what we want to do is when somebody pushes the arrow buttons on the keyboard, we want an animation to play. So we're going to go to this option. The following has been input. And we're going to add the four arrows. Now you could do on directional press, which is fine, but I like having more control. So I do for each of the inputs. It just makes checking everything a lot easier. Okay. And over here we want or statements. All right. So if up is pushed, or if down is pushed, or if left is pushed, or if right is pushed. If you use and, you it only trigger if you push both buttons at once. We don't want that. All right. So it says right now, if player presses a directional button, go to banking. All right. Banking is flying. Easy peasy. Done. All set. Now, for this one, if the following has been input, and once again, we go up, down, left, or right. Ah, but we're going to change something. Let's put the OR statements back into place. Now, let's change these. Upon release. So down here, you have on press, which means you push it, and it happens. All right, so you just push it, it happens once. Pressed is if you hold it down. Releasing is when you let go. And on release happens the moment the button stops being pushed. All right. So we want this all on on release. So basically when there's no input. Okay. So now we have our ship all set up to play the animations when the buttons are placed. Now, let's go a few options here and make sure that the plane is set up for button pressing. So we're gonna to go to moving and jumping, all right? You wanna make sure that it says control key settings and have the settings set up to the proper buttons as you see here and have the move type to basic, all right? You other uh, perimeters that we have is the horizontal movement, vertical movement, this is speed, and this is acceleration Okay, so the longer you hold the button down, the faster the object will get. Okay, then you have things so it could move us back and forth if you wanted to, and so on and so forth. Okay, but for right now, we're just going to use the default settings on everything, and we're going to place the object into our scene. So we go back to our scenes, we're going to save first. We go to object, click on player one, and we drop the ship down right here. All right, so save again and hit play as you can see the ship is now moving and the level is scrolling it's perfect see that excellent but you'll notice a strange problem 
When I let go of the buttons, the ship does not stay with the frame. So, what we're going to do is make sure the ship stays inside the frame while the camera moves. Now, it is very easy to make sure that the player stays fixed within the frame. You just go back to your objects, you go to basic settings, and right down here, you're going to call fix relative position to the camera. All right, so with that set up, we'll go back to play, and now our ship is actually scrolling with the camera. All right, perfect. Now the final thing to do before we end this tutorial is we're going to go to our object. We're going to go movement and jumping, and we're going to triple that speed to six and six. And now let's test it out. There you go. The ship has a much faster movement. Perfect. And it stays within the camera and we're all set for our basic character movements. Wonderful. Now, one thing you'll notice, however, is the ship can actually move off camera. And our next tutorial will show you a little trick to prevent the ship from moving off camera and we'll start working on shooting. All right, so until then, I am Mazer, and thank you for joining me today for Pixel Game Maker MV. Bye.